Okay, so get this. We're talking B-2 stealth bombers. Those flying wings, you know, straight out of a sci-fi movie. Hitting underground fortresses in Yemen. And it's not just the what that's yeah. got people talking, right? It's the why now. And the what does it mean? Buckle up, because in this deep dive, we're going deep into the Pentagon statement on these strikes. And trust me, the implications are explosive. Yeah, you're right to highlight those questions, because while the U.S. taking military action against the Houthis in Yemen, I mean, that's not exactly unheard of, but this time it feels different. Let's start with the basics. The Pentagon just announced these airstrikes targeting the Houthis, but they're being very specific, saying that they hit underground weapons facilities. Mm. What is the significance of that detail? I think it's crucial because it instantly tells us this wasn't just, you know, a few bombs dropped on some, like, desert outposts. No, we're talking hardened, buried structures, the kind that takes serious planning and uh, firepower to neutralize. And that is where the B-2 spirit bombers come in. Right. The B-2s. Even I know those are, like, the big leagues when it comes to air power. What message is the DOD sending by using these specific aircraft? The B-2, it's all about range and stealth. This thing can travel thousands of miles, penetrate like sophisticated air defenses, deliver its payload with incredible precision. By deploying the B-2s, the U.S. is showcasing its ability to project force globally, hitting, you know, high value targets, even in heavily defended environments. So it sounds like these strikes, I mean, these were more than just taking out a few targets, right? Like it's about the U.S. sending a message. You might even call it like a warning shot. Yeah. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's certainly a possibility. I mean, even the Pentagon statement, right? It emphasizes these strikes. They targeted the weapons components themselves, not just the facilities, you know. Mm -hmm. This suggests a focus on really degrading the Houthis' military capabilities while also potentially minimizing, you know, collateral damage, a message unlikely to be lost on anyone um, watching this all unfold. Yeah, and the statement goes on to specifically call out Iran as... Uh a backer of the Houthis. Is that, I mean, that's standard procedure or is there is there more to it in this case? Well, while it's true that the U.S. has, you know, consistently called out Iran's support for the Houthis in this context, um, it feels like, I don't know, more than just a routine condemnation. Okay. It really, I think, underscores the wider geopolitical stakes at play here, you know? The U.S. is framing this not just as a response to, like, you know, some attacks in Yemen, but as part of this broader effort to counter what it sees as Iranian destabilization in the region. Okay, so we've got precision strikes, advanced weaponry, and this clear message being sent about, you know, U.S. capabilities and their stance on Iran's involvement. But okay. you hinted earlier that this might be about sending a message uh, even further afield. Is there is there something else going on here? Well, what's fascinating here, I think, is the timing of it all. Okay. These strikes come at a moment of, let's just say, heightened tensions right. between the U.S. and China, particularly over Taiwan. Hold on. Are you suggesting that, that China might be, like, taking notes right now, trying to figure out how they'd handle a similar situation, maybe even in the Taiwan Strait? It's certainly a possibility worth considering, I think. Imagine you're China, right, and you're watching the U.S. conduct these long-range strikes against hardened targets. It's hard not to, I don't know, draw parallels to the situation with Taiwan, right? Especially with China's, you know, increasing assertiveness in the region. So it's like the U.S. is putting on this, like, show of force, right? Yeah. And not just for, like, the Houthis or Iran, but for China as well. Mm -hmm. But is that, I mean, is that really an effective strategy? I mean, couldn't this kind of posturing backfire right. and like actually make things more tense. Yeah, it's a delicate balancing act, there's no doubt. The US wants to deter potential adversaries obviously, but without, you know, provoking an actual conflict. And you're right, there's always a risk with this kind of signaling, right, that it could be misinterpreted or or escalate tensions further. So what should we be like watching for as this situation unfolds? What are the like the key things that'll tell us whether this strategy of deterrence is actually working or not? Well, first, I'd say keep an eye on how the Houthis themselves react. Okay. Do these strikes actually lead to, you know, a decrease in attacks? Or do they kind of, you know, double down? Maybe with support from Iran, their response will be very telling. And what about Iran? I mean, they're the ones, like, directly being called out here. How do you, how do you see them playing this? I think Iran is, uh, well, they're a wild card in all of this. Yeah. Do they view this as, I don't know, a sign of weakness? an opportunity to kind of assert themselves further in the region? Or will they tread carefully, knowing that a larger conflict with the U.S. is not exactly in their best interest? Their next move will be crucial. And of course, we can't forget about China. What should we be looking for in their, like, behavior, yeah. their rhetoric, 
that might, you know, give us clues about how they're interpreting all of this. China is going to be watching the U.S. response very, very closely. Any sign of hesitation, any sign of overreaction, they'll be looking for weaknesses to exploit, right? Mm. Opportunities to advance their own interests, especially when it comes to Taiwan. Wow, this has been this has been a real eye opener. We went from like underground bunkers to like international power plays in the blink of an eye. It really highlights how interconnected like everything is in geopolitics. Absolutely. I think it's a good reminder that, you know, seemingly isolated events, these things can have ripple effects across the globe and that understanding the, uh, you know, the motivations and potential consequences, mm -hmm. that's key. So for our listener, what's like the one big takeaway you want them to remember from this deep dive? I think it's pay close attention to these what might seem like small events, right? Because they often hold the key to understanding the much bigger picture of, you know, international relations. It's a complex world out there, folks. Yeah. But hopefully this deep dive has given you some, uh, you know, some food for thought. Until next time, keep asking those gut questions and never stop exploring.